In this video, we're going to go over the fundamentals of Charity Engine's email and campaigns tool. There are three terms in campaigns to understand. Creative, which is the content produced. Initiative, sometimes referred to as an effort, which is the act of sending creative at a specific time via a specific channel like email or print. And campaign, which is an aggregation of initiatives for reporting purposes. We'll look over all three in order in this video. So starting with this page, which is the creative section, you'll find within the campaigns module, it allows you to search through all the emails that have already been created, and you can search by date, or an advanced filter, which allows you to search by name, creative ID, subject headline, or a range of dates with when it was created. If we wanted to create a new one, we just click the Create New button. Now let's look at some of the great data we see right here on this first summary page. To the left is the creative ID, which we can use for searching or even querying. We have the creative name, welcome series, send one. The subject, which is what people will see in their inbox when it comes in. And we get a great little thumbnail preview of what the creative looks like. Last use tells you exactly that. When is the last time this piece of creative was used for an email blast? Number of efforts tells you how many times it was sent. And then click-through percentage and conversion percentage are really valuable bits of data to tell you the success of this particular piece of creative. Click-through tells you the percentage of click-throughs that it's got, and conversion percentage tells you how many times it led to a donation or some sort of transaction. The higher that number, the more you know it was a successful email. Date tells us the date that this particular email was created, which is the date that's used for searching purposes in the date range up here. And then all the way on the right, we have our Actions button. We can manage or edit it, duplicate it to be used again in the future, or edit it slightly, delete if we want to get rid of it, preview is just a quick pop-up preview of what it looks like, and then spam. We'll get into spam in the next section, but it's a really valuable thing, spam score test. Email Blast lets us jump past editing and right into sending it from this screen. And Schedule is part of Drip Campaigns, which we'll explain in a later video. We want to go into Editing, so we're going to go to the Manage button right here. Now we've landed on our Configuration page, which allows us to edit or even create our email. The first tab we have here is our General tab. We can see this is where you apply the name. Now remember, this is an internal name only. Your users will not see this information. It's just for you for reviewing, searching, and sorting. Subject is the email subject that will display in their inbox. This will be seen by your end users. So you want to make sure that what's here is the kind of thing that will attract them to open up their email. Now, template is a really important part of understanding what makes Charity Engine's email and campaign tool. So let's start by showing you a full email preview. When we preview it, we'll see right here we have our header, which has our logo, home link, about us, and privacy link. And then on the bottom, we have our social media links. In the middle is our creative content. Now, the header and the footer below are the email template. When we refer to email template, we're referring to the frame around your creative content, which includes your header and your footer. When you receive your instance of Charity Engine, you will be provided your own personally configured email templates or a range of templates. The beauty of the template system is that you don't have to create new headers and footers every time you send an email. You can use existing ones. So let's take a quick look at what that template component is. This is where we can search for all of our templates. I've selected this one, CE Green Black. We go to Manage. We'll go to Preview the Template. And here you see it's just referring to the header and the footer. And it gives us a little Latin data here just to show what it looks like. But again, remember that templates refer to the header and the footer and can be used as many times as you want or you can create new ones yourself, or we're happy to help. It's important to understand that templates are created using HTML. There's no WYSIWYG for creating these, so you have to be able to use or edit HTML code. Again, if you need help creating new ones, reach out to our client services team. 
Now below the template is our creative content. You can create the content using the WYSIWYG and all the capabilities here like font size and tables and such, adding images and hyperlinks. Or if you use HTML code, you can go directly into here and cut and paste your source code. We'll have other videos that show you how to use the WYSIWYG and the source code capabilities, so we'll skip ahead to the next component, which is our text version. Sometimes emails won't allow you to look at images or HTML code. They only receive text. So instead of retyping it, you just click on this overwrite from above, and all of the text from the email will be copied into this text-only version. You'll have to do a little editing for spacing, but it's much easier than retyping everything. The next tab is our RSS tab. This is a little complex and something you probably won't be getting into right away and don't need for sending emails, so we're going to skip ahead. In fact, this tab may not even be visible in your instance of Charity Engine. Our last tab is the Advanced tab, which despite its name actually isn't a very advanced tab. All you have here is the media channel, which is email and already selected by default, and then the ability to add links for viewing the email in a browser. See where it says to view email in a browser? Click here. Well, that gets created right here. You've got your web version note to view email in a browser and web version link, click here. Now, what is the difference between those two? The difference is that the web version note is non-linkable text. The web version link is hyperlink text. You want to make sure that include web version link is clicked and hide web version link is not. If you don't want that capability, you can merely click off update it, and then that will no longer appear. This feature is a great example of Charity Engine's customization capabilities. We go back to our general tab, and here's where we have a preview if we wanted to take a look, or spam score test if we wanted to run a spam score, and again just click that button, it will show your spam score, and as long as your score is below 3.0, this creative should safely get through any email filters. So when we're ready, let's go ahead and send, and then we'll move on to the send section. Now that we've set up our creative, here is where we go ahead and send out the email. So section one here is selecting the message, which has already been selected, welcome series, send one. In the actions button, we can search other messages, create a new message, or preview our message just to make sure that's indeed the one we want to send. Next we go to naming the email blast. The default gives you the time it's sent and the person who's sending it, but to make it easier to remember which one, you'll want to customize your name. So we'll call it Welcome Series 1. Next is selecting the audience. Who do we want this to go to, whether it's a list, a query, or we're just running a test? In the case of sending it to a list, we go to opt-in list and select our list. We'll go with Lee's list. Now you notice once we've selected our list, the send button automatically appears. But there's a few action buttons we can use before we hit send that you'll want to know about. First is view list members. Click this button and it will show you a context listing of all of the people who are on this list. Manage list settings. This is if you have customized settings for your email for the from email, the reply to email, or the displayed name used on the email. That all can be set up right here. Third is creating a new list. If you want to send it to a new list that doesn't already exist, go here, and that will take you to the list management section directly. If that's the list we want to send it to, we just go ahead and click send. Let's move to query. Query works a lot like list. Let's find a query we would send it to, in this case, Lee's test of Lee's list. Now once we've selected our query, it also makes the send button appear. And here's the actions we can do here, which is preview our query data, manage the query if we wanted to make edits to the query we're using, change the query email settings, which like the list settings, is the email displayed from, the name displayed from, and the email reply to information, other than the default. 
And then if you want to create a new query, you can do that from here. Now we look at the filters section, which at the time of this recording is still in beta. Now I don't have any filters here, so let's go ahead and create a new one. We go to create. And this allows you to add a number of lists together. So let's say we want to send it to Lee's list and Mercy's list. We look over to the right and we see our filters, Lee's list and Mercy list. We can send it to people who are in any of them or we can send it to only the people who are in all of them. If we want to remove one, we just simply click here and it's gone. The last option is to run a quick test. Before you go ahead sending it to anybody or showing it to everybody in your system, we want to give you the chance to just review how it looks when it comes in your inbox. So it automatically populates the user's email and you can add other emails by typing comma and adding them and then go ahead and click send test and it will send a test email only to your inbox. It won't camp count against your campaign numbers. It won't count against your data numbers. It won't do anything. It just shows you what it looks like when it comes in your email box. Now our advanced settings actually do have quite a number of options available to you. First is changing the send date. Now, if we were to just click send, it would send immediately. But if we want to schedule something out for the future, we go here and then change the date. We simply click on the number, change the date, and now it will go out at a future point. Send notifications is so that you can be aware of when your emails go out and you can add multiple people to this send notifications field. Now campaigns will be discussed in another video, but it's really important to understand what campaigns are. Campaigns are the overarching campaign with which this email might be part of. So let's say this was not our welcome series, but it was part of our holiday series. And we had a whole campaign around holidays so we that we wanted to do testing and see what our numbers are so we've created the campaign holidays awareness days in our configuration we click on that and then you can have sub campaigns too so within the holidays campaign i want to look at just how we're doing on our july 4th campaign so we click on that select and now the data from this email will fall under the campaign for holidays and then the sub campaign of july 4th the more things you add into campaigns, the more you'll have an overarching understanding of what themes and ideas are leading to success in addition to individual pieces of creative. A campaign could include your email blast, but it could also include a print ad, web banners, events, direct mail, or even direct TV. Media channel is already selected. And then fund is if you want all of the donations or transactions that happen based on this email to go to a particular fund. Now it's important to understand that if the web form it's driving to already has a fund selected, that will override this fund. So this only is helpful if that web form does not currently have a selected fund. Now delivery mode. It automatically sends in live, but if you wanted to run a test of how it looks in both HTML or text only, you'd send this test version. That will send three copies of each message to whoever you're sending it to. So you do not want to send that to your entire list. By test, we mean it sends the email in HTML mode, HTML slash text mode, and then text only mode. You will receive three emails for each audience member. So you only want to send this to a very select group of people. I recommend creating a list of test names and a query that pulls test names. So for when you want to do your testing, you can make sure you're only sending tests to those particular people. If you sent tests, to everybody on a list, 
they will all receive the three copies. So be very cognizant of how you use test in this case before you send. Last is the option to do some advanced deduping on your email. Now it's automatically selected so that if, a per, if you run a query or a combination of lists or for some reason somebody's name or an email shows up multiple times, they will not receive multiple emails. They'll only get it once. So it dedupes based on contact and email. You can also dedupe based on contact only or email only or in none where it gets sent no matter how many times somebody is on a list, they will get a send for each of their instances they are on those combination of lists. So it defaults to making sure people only get one, but if you wanted the option to get more granular, you can choose these in the dropdown. When you're ready to send your email, just go back here, click send, and you're ready to go. Watch more videos on how to take advantage and use all the functionality of Charity Engine's email campaign tool.